morning. My name is Miss Dover at Wilder Middle School and I am here with my CRC sixth grade math class and today we are going to focus on a number talk and fractions, decimals, and percents. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are starting with our number talk today. So who can read me our little blurb above and below this box for me? I need a strong college hand. Three hands, come on, give me some more. Tamia. Yep, bottom and top. Multiplicative? Good. So I've already covered up our answer choices because we're going to try to jog our memories and see what we remember about our multiplicative inverse property and see if we can identify any keywords in this problem here. So I want a strong college hand who can raise their hand and tell me what's a really important keyword in this problem that we've got here. I see one, two, three, four, five good hands. All right, Jalen, what do you see here? Does not, yeah, so we're looking for the answer choice that does not show this multiplicative inverse property. And what's one other keyword that I should identify before I even start thinking about my answer choices? Kennedy. Ah, all right, you jumped ahead of me. So she saw the multiplicative inverse property and she remembered that that has to do with something about reciprocals. Who can take that a step further? We know that our multiplicative inverse property uses reciprocals, but who can, who can embellish on that? Think about it for about 30 seconds. I'm trying to think about what we know about our multiplicative inverse property. See, three hands, four, 10 more seconds. All right, Deshaun, what do you know? Ah, so when we have flipped fractions, we switch our numerators and denominators. Those are reciprocals. Good. What are we doing with those reciprocals in this property? What operation, Melissa? Look at your keywords. What operation are we using in this property? What does this word right here say? Multiplicative. So we're multiplying our reciprocals, and when we multiply our reciprocals, no matter what they are, what is my answer always going to be? Anything times its reciprocal is always going to be, Jaden? It's always going to be one. Nice job. So we've already uncovered a lot of information about this problem, and we haven't even looked at our answer choices yet. So I'm going to move this screen for us, and I want you to discuss with your table partners which of these people did not apply the multiplicative inverse property. So we're looking at which person has not multiplied a number by its reciprocal. So take a look at Yancey, Jared, Amber, and William. When you think you have your answer, discuss it with your table partners. Thank you, Deja's table, for getting started. What do you guys think over here? You think it's Amber? So in Amber, you don't see any reciprocals there? So remember, we're looking for the answer that's not showing this property. So let's start at the top. Yancey, do you see that if they multiplied any reciprocals? And what are my reciprocals in Yancey's problem? And did that equal one on the right side of the equal sign? So Yancey shows it. What about Jared? David, you tell me about Jared. Do you see any reciprocals being multiplied? Hmm? Are they being multiplied together, though? What are they being? What's happening with those? So they're apart. What operation are they separated by? Addition. And addition is in our multiplicative inverse. So is it a safe bet to say that Jared did not show that property correctly? Let's. Because why? Yeah, you're right. On the right side, it never equals one. Look at Amber and William just to be sure. Do you guys see any reciprocals being multiplied together? All right, go ahead, Tamia. All right, guys, eyes up here. Which group has got an answer for which student here did not correctly use or did not use at all the multiplicative inverse property? I should see a hand from every single group member in here. Excellent job. All right, Melissa, what do you think? Jared, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you agree. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you agree. All right, so Jaden, is that a thumbs middle or thumbs up? Thumbs up. All right, who can explain to me, good job, Melissa, why is Jared not using the multiplicative inverse property? How do you know that? Because this looks really complex. Amir? 
Oh, so you see reciprocals here, but they're separated by an addition sign. They're not being multiplied together. All right, give yourself some shine. You guys did a nice job with that. Excellent. All right, so we are going to, ladies and gentlemen, move on to modeling percents, fractions, and decimals on 100 grids and number lines today. So I need two volunteers to help me out. Each of us is going to get 100 grid, one marker, and one eraser, okay? Um, Deshaun, 100 grids please. Kennedy, come here. Markers, please. And you guys are gonna have to share some erasers, okay? Hmm? We're using these as our whiteboards today. You guys are gonna have to share your erasers, okay? Uh, you can hold on to that for a couple minutes, Mayara, and I will get it. Can you guys share your erasers, please? Can you guys share your, actually, you guys are good. No, you can still give her one, she can still participate. All right, Anna, you're ready when your eyes are up on me. Remember, these whiteboards are to help us understand our fractions, decimals, and percents, so I don't want to see us coloring on them right now. I want your eyes and ears up on me. Does everybody have a white, a little yellow whiteboard and a marker? Okay, if you all don't have your own eraser, go ahead and just share with one another, okay? All right, so we have done a really awesome job with converting between our fractions, decimals, and percents, but what we're gonna focus on today is how we can order and compare them from least to greatest or greatest to least based on a model here, okay? So I'm telling you that this yellow square is one whole. <coughs> So when I flip it over and I have a hundred grid, meaning I have a hundred squares, do you guys agree that this is still one whole? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to flip our slide here and I want you guys to talk to me about how I can represent 30% right here. So before we draw anything on this, what do you know about 30%? Let's start with what do we know about percents in general? So right now you're thinking, what do we know about all percents in general, Myra? They're all out of 100. Nice job. What else do I know about 30%? Let's be a little bit more specific with this one right here. What can you tell me using a benchmark number that we know about 30% right here, Tamia? Okay, so 30% is equal to 0 and 30 hundredths. I like that. Tell me about this. Is this number here going to be more than one or is it going to be less than one? Give me a strong call of hand if you can tell me that. Is that number more than one or less than one? I see two hands in the back. A couple more up here. Amir? It's less than one. How do we know that? What is one whole representative of if I want to put that in percent form? 100%. Good. All right, so what I want you guys to do, you guys have a 100 grid right here. I want you to use your whiteboard marker right now and represent this percent on your yellow 100 grid. When you think you've got it, put your hand in the air so we can come take a look. Tell me what you're doing. Color in three. Three what? Three boxes? Three tens. Three tens to make how many? Three. I mean, 30%. 30%. Okay, what are you doing, Jalen? So how many did you color in? Three boxes. Three rows. Oh, yeah. And how many total boxes is that? Three. Thirty. How'd you know you were gonna color in thirty? Because of the addition of hundred so it's ten, twenty, thirty. And thirty percent means it's thirty out of what? hundred. All percents are out of hundred? Yeah. Good. All right, guys, so let's come back up here. I'm looking around and I see that all of us in here colored 30 boxes. And we all colored the exact same one. So, just happened to work out like this. I see that most of us colored this row, this row, and this row right here. Why does this represent 30%? Who can give me a hand in the air? Why is this representative of 30%, Deja? So it says three out of 100? No, it's 30. It's 30 out of 100. You have three rows of 10, which gives me 30. Let me ask you a question. Could I have done it like this? What if I had decided to shade in 10 there and 10 there? Is that still 30%? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you think it is. 
Thumbs up or thumbs down if that's still 30%. Why is that still 30%? Jaden. Because you still have three shakes and the bottom of the One, two, three? Three ten shaded in to give me 30. Nice job. All right, go ahead and erase your boards. We're going to do another one. All right, now you are going to represent 15% on your 100 grid, and I'm going to challenge you. I want you to try to show it differently than the people at your table. So let's see if we can all show 15% in a different way than the person who's sitting at our table. Ooh, you're getting creative with your design. I like it. So, Amir, tell me why that's 15%. It got five shades. Yep. Oh. Now look at the board. What are we representing? And how many do you have shaded there? Let's count them. How many is this? And how many is this? So is that 15 out of how many total squares are here? And is 15 out of 100 the same as 15%? All right, let's compare yours to Antoine's here. So why are these, first of all, Antoine, how many um, boxes do you have shaded here? 15. And why is this the same representation as this one? Because we both have 15 boxes. Out of how many total? 100. And all percents are out of what? 100. 100, nice job. All right, when I look around, I am looking to see, I see everybody here has 15% oh. represented in a little bit of a different way. Excellent job. So, anytime I have a whole number, or I'm sorry, a percent, and I'm trying to represent it, I just have to make sure that I have this number of boxes shaded out of how many? 100. 100, because all percents are numbers that are out of 100. All right, so this percent looks a little different than the other ones that we have been looking at today. What is different about this percent than, let's say, the 30% that we did and the 15% that we did? What's different about this? Kennedy, what do you think? All right, it does have a decimal, good. Is there anything in the whole number spot, Deja? So is there? There's a zero in my whole number spot. So when I look at this percent right here, what generalization can you tell me about what you're going to shade on your 100 grid? So think about this. If this is 0 and 3 tenths percent, what can you tell me about what you're going to do on this 100 grid right here? Jaden? You might have to use like the smallest piece. Oh, I like what you're saying. So I might have to use a smaller piece. Smaller than what? Okay, so this is a hole, so we know it's not a hole because 100% is a hole, but what does one of these boxes represent? Raise a hand if you can tell me. If you shade in one of these boxes here, I'm going to do it for you. If I shade in this one box right here, what does this represent? Jalen? How many do I have shaded in? Do I have, how many boxes do I have shaded in? So this is one out of 100, right? So what percent would one out of 100 be, Savion? 1%. So if I shade one box in here, I have 1%. But let's go back to this percent right here. Is this more than 1% or is this less than 1%? Think about what you know when you're comparing numbers. Is this number right here more than 1% or less than 1%? Less than 1%. Less than 1%. So that means that when you go to represent this on here, you have to shade in less than 1%. Is that correct? Can you guys show me, to the best of your ability, what this would look like on your 100 grid? If you have less than 1%, that means you have to shade in less than one of your boxes that are on your 100 grid. All right, so tell me what you did here. Why did you do three? Is that 3%? Oh, no. Mm-mm, what is it? It's, all right, tell me what it is compared to 1%. It's less than 1%, so that means we want to shade in less than one box, right? All right, David, so talk to us about what you did there. Loud and proud, we can't hear you. Little, like, for how much three would be for 
less than 1%. Oh, so you knew you had less than 1%. Nice job. So you shaded in part of 1% because we have part of a percent here. Now, who can tell me what is one half as a decimal? Raise your hand. Everyone, I should have all hands in the air. We all know what one half is as a decimal. Thank you, David. Who can tell me what that is, Myera? One half is a decimal? Yeah, we have five tenths. So if I had, oops, you guys can't see that. If I had half of a percent, I would have zero and five tenths percent. This is a little bit bigger than three tenths percent. So you know that this is going to be less than half of your percent, but it's pretty close to half of a percent. So if you wanted to make this a little bit bigger, you could to represent your three tenths percent. But overall, nice job identifying that this number was less than one percent. Go ahead and clear your boards. Thank you so much for joining our class. We hope you learned a little bit about modeling percents on our 100 grid today. Wow, Wolverines!